What's up, everybody? Kyle Merlet here with Vanishing Magic. I'm here with my good friend Nick Einhorn. Uh, Nick is an incredible magician from the UK, and we've met a few times, uh, and one of the nicest guys. Uh, he has a brand new effect, uh, Build a Marker. Uh, so, Nick, say hi to everybody. Hi, how you doing? Nice to be with you. Uh, good. So, Build a Marker. It's like a phenomenal new effect. It's a, a up, update on the classic build tube uh, type of effect, but now... What I love about magic is how you take a classic effect that makes no sense with a brass tube that does makes no sense, and you're putting it in an organic item that we're all familiar with and we all use. Uh, so tell us some more about uh, you know the build a marker and where it came from, how it came to be, and so forth. sure. Okay. Well, first of all, the effect itself isn't new. The effect's been around for many, many years, and um, there's been many different versions over the years uh, that people have come up with. But the particular version that I was using for about eight years uh, belonged to Antonio Romero from Spain, okay. a fantastic magician who had this wonderful uh, gimmick, and I used it very successfully. I think the difficult thing was trying to find a way to use it that uh, was practical in real-world situations. So the prop's lovely, but how do you take that prop and create a routine which you can do in a performing environment sure. when you're doing one table and then move on to the next table and you, you're moving on all night long. You want to make it very, very practical. So the routines that I came up with um, were almost as important as the gimmick in the sense that not only do I teach um, what the gimmick is, but actually how to use it, how to wear it, um, how to reset it. Uh, and um, so I, in fact, bought the rights from Antonio Romero uh, to manufacture and market this version last year. And I spent quite a bit of time actually manufacturing the, the gimmick myself in the UK. Well, um, had some, well, I didn't make it. I mean, I had some guys yeah. make it. But I oversaw production okay. and um, managed, to, managed to include a really important feature in there, which is to uh, give you the ability to reset the, uh, the gimmick immediately. Yeah, right I mean, you just you just showed that to me before we were recording, and it's so well thought out, and it just makes total sense, and everything about it is just great. It's really yeah, good. thank you. Uh, and now, so the the what what do you receive like in the package? Like, are you? I mean, is it kind of ready to set and go right out of the box, or is there stuff that you have to yes. do? Yes. Okay. Pretty much. Um, so what you get is you get a set of two pens. Um, you get um, a regular pen. Um, you get a second pen, which is your gimmick. Um, the regular pen, obviously, is just a regular pen. Sure. The gimmick, you can you can actually uh, make it workable. Um, I okay. don't. Um, the nib is dry, and the reason for that is because your spectators and yourself are probably going to be handling that pen a little bit more. Um, and during the course of the routines that I supply, you never need that pen to write. Yeah. And in fact, one of the um, presentational bits that I've got with it is that when um, they go to write with that pen, it's suddenly dried out. So they sign their name on a, on a bill. Right, that's um, great. And then the bill vanishes. Um, and then when they go to write their name down on another bill, because you say you're going to do the trick again, um, the bill's dried out. That's why the market. Which moments out. ago it was perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. And then you say sure. the reason it's dried out is because there's a blockage in the pen that wasn't there before. And then suddenly the light bulb goes in sure. their mind and they kind of think, no way, it can't be. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a great idea. Uh, now, I've seen the, the gimmick. It's really well made. I was surprised. It's not... Uh, I mean, I don't want to say what the gimmick is or whatever. I mean, we're most people are familiar with the build two principle, but like, I didn't, I didn't know that the the gimmick aspect was going to be metal. Like, I thought it, I didn't know how well it was going to be made. It's really nice. Yeah, the, actual, the actual pen is is is, a, is an aluminium pen, so um, it's pronounced aluminum. Aluminum. Well, when you say it in proper English, <laughs> uh, it's aluminum, right. and um, and so the gimmick is made. You know, but it's made from scratch, and when I say it's precision engineered, I mean it's precision engineered. Like, if it were a, a, a fraction of a hair's width more or less, then this just wouldn't work. Um, and the process to get this made it is very, very precise indeed. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I mean, it's really well worth it, but also it's just a solid, workable, working piece of magic, which is really nice. Uh, and then tell us about uh, what you teach on the DVD. Like, are there like Routines for like beginners, or is there more like are they advanced routines? Or yeah, absolutely. So the routine that I perform in the um, trailer that you've probably seen is the one that I do on a regular basis, day in day out, and it's got plenty of humour in there. There's plenty of moments of magic, um, 
try and incorporate a bill switch, which you do or don't have to include in yours. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's a great addition to a bill switch routine, and everything kind of comes full circle. Um, but I do teach a number of different ways to perform it on there. Uh, interestingly, um, I teach a pure sleight of hand method for vanishing the note, which is what I, or the bill, uh, which is what I use on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the vanish works because there's a great bit of misdirection which catches everybody off guard and gives you the ability to, to do that vanish. But I teach on there a way to use various other gimmicks, some of which you will already own, sure. or some of which are very easily available through your magic store, um, or you can actually just make them yourself um, and use those as a way to make the bill vanish in a non sleight of hand version. Sure. Uh, actually, since uh, the Blackpool Convention, which has just taken place in the UK, um, I was demonstrating it quite a lot with one of these other methods with, um, you know, w w w a vanish which wasn't sure. sleight of hand. And actually, subsequently, have then gone on to different events and actually used that version to vanish the bill. And I think it's um, it's got a bit more audience participation. And uh, although I hadn't really used it very much before, um, after eight years, I've actually just changed around the way that I'm performing it to include this non sleight of hand version because it's it's really good fun. Great. Uh, and then I think probably the answer is most of the questions that uh, I've seen people ask. But probably the number one question is. Um, how difficult is it to perform and to uh, just be to just be clear load the pin with the bill? Uh, how easy is that to happen if you're not wearing a jacket or if you're wearing like jeans instead of slacks yeah. or so forth? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, you could have it in your pocket. So you could have the gimmick um, in the open position in your pocket, and as long as you know the orientation of that uh, marker then when you put the folded bill in your pocket um, in a secret move or mm -hmm. you know you, you can load it in, within a second i mean honestly well I'll, I'll add a little note to that sorry to interrupt but like the bill tube the classic bill tube used to be very small right so like the 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 load you kind of had like you had to kind of stuff the bill in there now the marker is at least one and a half times bigger so yeah. when you showed it to me a moment ago, that the actual loading area is fairly large and shouldn't be difficult to get it in there. Absolutely. And also, it's, um, it's very specific, the way that you uh, roll up the bill or you mm -hmm. fold the bill. And I teach that in detail on the DVD. Um, and I think that the, um, the other thing, especially from Americans, you know, British notes are much bigger. Sure. And they go in there with ease. Sure. So American notes are going to go in there you know, even more easily. Great. And um, if you're just wearing uh, trousers or pants, as you say in, in the US, um, you can you can load it from your pocket or you can load it from your back pocket so you sure. can have it sticking out. So if you if you wear a t-shirt or a shirt open mm -hmm. over your trousers or your pants, um, that would hide the gimmick. It could be half kind of sticking out the sure. back pocket. And as you reach round, you can just load it from that. Um, I also cover if you wear a waistcoat um, you know, how to, um, or a vest, I think mm -hmm. is the American terminology, sure. you know, how to set that up as well. So there's lots of different ways you can wear it, and uh, certainly the way that I use it is incredibly practical if you wear a jacket. If you don't wear a jacket, there's other opportunities to uh, wear it elsewhere. Great. Uh, and I just remembered one last question. Um, so, and I'll answer part of it, and I'll let you chime in as well. So a lot of people have asked, us, Vanishing Inc., and I've seen like on the Magic Cafe and stuff, like, uh, you know, in America, we don't have those markers. Uh, right. And are we going to carry replacement markers? So, to answer the question, in case you didn't see what I posted on the cafe, uh, yes, we are going to carry replacement markers. Uh, but I know, Nick, you have some insight on this as well. So, go ahead. Yeah, I do. So, the marker that, um, that I'm using is uh, it's very familiar in, in Europe. Um, it's called it's an Edding brand pen um, and it's an expensive brand pen I mean it's a really good mm -hmm. marker now the fact that it's not familiar in America is not a problem you're giving someone a pen to write their name on or a marker to write their name with um, no one questions the, the, the make or model of, of a pen when was the last time someone gave you a pen to write something with and you looked at it and said well, well what the hell is that you know mm -hmm. you just don't do it it may not be a known brand in America but honestly Magicians are the only people that care about this thing. Um, 
the public, and I've performed this all over the world, including America, and nobody has ever said, well, you know, that's an odd pen. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just a marker. You get them to write their name on it, um, and it, it, it's, it's examinable, so if they wanted to check it, they could. There's nothing to see. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, if it were a, a Sharpie, you'd have to make it out of a, a bigger Sharpie. Those really big ones, yeah. Yeah, which makes it difficult to carry around, and you have to carry around two of them, um, and then you don't get the instant reset feature, which is what's so beautiful about this particular model. So um, the other thing to say is that one of these pens is going to last you years. The ink in it is like, you know, it, it lasts for a long, long time. Sure. Um, if you perform it on a daily basis and after a couple of years you need, need a new pen, then, you know, Vanishing Ink will be able to get a hold but of it. But also the, the replacements will be... Incredibly cheap, but as expensive as a marker, you know. So yeah, yeah. you're not going to pay any more for it. You know, even if um, you have problems getting them in the U.S., then contact me directly, and for the for the cost of, of a pen, um, I will I will send it out. And uh, you know, it's not going to cost you twenty dollars for a marker. You know, it's just it's mm -hmm. just a marker, but it is a good quality one. And I can't see the need for many people actually buying a replacement pen or, or marker. Sure. Uh, well, great. I think that answer is. Pretty much everything, unless you can think of anything else you want to mention, but I think that's about it. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think this is going to be one of those things that, A, it's, it's lovely to own. B, once you start playing with it, you're going to realize that this is a real worker's routine. You know, I've got maybe five tricks in my repertoire that I use on a daily basis to make a living, um, and this is one of those that I would not walk out the door without in, in my case. I mean, I just have to perform it when I'm performing. But also... I think people, not to toot your own horn, but like I think people uh, are familiar with you enough now that they realize that everything that you release is truly a worker. I mean, Nesta Wallets, uh, your Ring Flight, all those effects you have obviously worked on and performed for, I mean, you've been performing this for, would you say, eight years or something? Yeah, uh, eight And years, now so. you're just now releasing it. So obviously you've already done all the work for us and you know worked out the kinks and things like that. That's it. It's not... You know, it, it is obviously you're receiving a, a beautifully made gimmick, and it's uh, you know it's custom built and it's precision engineered. But what you're really buying as well is the routining and the handling for it. And I have spent eight years refining it, making it as you know ready to go as possible. So literally, you could pick this up in the morning, you could rehearse it in the afternoon, and you could go out and perform it in the evening. Mm -hmm. And I think the first time you perform it, when you see the reactions that, that it gets for you. Um, you'll realize that it's a, it's a keeper and you're not going to want to leave home without it. Great. Awesome. Well, uh, Nick, thank you so much. I know it's a little late there in the UK, so thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time out to do a little interview with us. It's a pleasure. Really good to speak to you. Thank right. you very much. Talk to you soon.